Right, I'm going to be doing a rear brake job today on the Humber because when I last had the drums off the linings were uh, worn really uh, low so they want replacement. Uh, you'll see that in just a moment, the state of the existing linings. Uh, there are also bonded linings which are currently fitted which I don't care for even though these on this car haven't given me any trouble uh, my preference is always for riveted uh, linings so that's what I've got here I've got a set of used replacements from my spur parts stash uh, these are from a super snipe and you can see there's plenty left on them I'm not a driver who drives on the brakes, in fact I rarely use the brakes uh, I like to keep forward momentum going as much as possible So as a consequence, my brakes often last around 50,000 miles or more uh, and that's, that's no boast really, but it, it's, uh, it, it just goes to show Same with a clutch, I mean a clutch should last really 100,000 miles a mower it all depends on the the driver well I've got these uh, good set of original shoes there I've got the workshop manual here for the Humber it's a simple job really uh, I have had the shoes off before just to do some other work but I'm gonna go to this section here page 12 and uh, we'll just have a look because as I say there is uh, there is something to be aware of pull the leading shoe uh, away first and then you've got to make sure that the replacements are the right way round with the linings positioned correctly you see because as you can see there there is a gap on one end and the lining is is all the way to the end of the shoe up the other end so they've got to be the right way around otherwise it's dead easy as you shall now see but the first job is to uh, jack the car up and I'm going to jack it up on this spring shackle with a bit of wood in between uh, so I've got clearance to remove the wheel um, I can't on this particular car position the jack under the uh, uh, what do you call it u-bolts the where the axle attaches to the springs because because of the wheel arch, uh, you cannot get the wheel off this car because of the body style. It's quite uh, quite a low wheel arch, so up it has to come. Okay, so the car's now jacked up, wheels well off the ground, uh, nice and safely. <laughs> wood block there just to intersperse not only does that give a bit of extra height but it also prevents metal on metal contact and obviates the risk of any damage front wheels chocked uh, handbrake necessarily has to be off of course for a brake job it's not going anywhere and I've also positioned an axle stand just for a bit of extra safety and just before I do remove the wheel and nerve plate um, I've just been admiring the my classic tyre which is a Firestone Deluxe Champion tubeless size 6.70 by 15 made in the good old US of A, see? And these were new tyres, they still make them. 
because it was a very popular size for a lot of American cars in the early to mid 50s. Uh, so a good popular size with a nice pie crust edge, cross ply of course. Let's uh, get the wheel off back afterwards. Right, I was just about to take the wheel off, but we've got a little visitor, our uh, male blackbird. He regularly comes, and I, I just think he likes coming here to watch, don't you? Either that or food. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be using. Uh, the proper Roots Humber tool for this uh, as supplied in the tool kit. It's a good idea to uh, just crack these nuts off with the wheel still on the ground, feeling that can apply the handbrake is beneficial because it stops the wheel rotating. And it's a five stud uh, wheel as you can see, very very sturdy. Massive, you know, big uh, wheel nuts there. I'll just pop them uh, safely there out of the way. And you'll notice as well that they are tapered, so you can only fit them one way, even though that doesn't stop uh, some fitters from fitting them the wrong way. So then the wheel comes off. I do have some oil leakage there from the uh, axle seal, I know about that, it's a job that is planned in for when uh, my mate Martin is out of hospital and a bit more mobile, because we've got to get his scrapper off the lift, so that I can put my car on the lift. Okay folks, so with the wheel off, that allows access to the drum and um, Roots, they must have used the same drums, uh, you know, for the cars because this has an adjuster hole there, even though the adjuster for this particular uh, brake, well, these cars, this is a Series 2, is uh, <coughs> is there? I know lighting isn't particularly good here, but you can see that it's one of the cam, sorry, not cam wedge um, thingios. I used to know the name of them, but I've forgotten. Uh, Square-headed internal adjuster there, which you uh, get to through the back plate, uh, which can save you the job of removing the wheel to adjust the brakes. Mind you, having said that, no, I tell a lie. This is how good Roots Group were. They put the uh, access hole for the adjuster on the wheel as well. So you wouldn't have to remove the wheel if the adjusters were of the snail cam type. Uh, anyway, I digress. So, the whole drum, this massive drum, is retained by this one countersunk screw, which I'm going to undo now. Uh, but the first job is to slacken off the adjustment. And to that end, I've got a selection of uh, tools. 
Well, these are just a few of the types available. Uh, square headed, you see, all various sizes for different uh, different cars. So let's go in with. Uh, Try that one first, eh? That might do the job. Let's have a look. I'm just trying to do this from uh, memory, although it's impossible to remember the size of everything. I did write a list for the car, and it's not that one. That'll do it. So I'm just slackening off the adjuster here and uh, let's see now. That just removes, takes the shoes away from the uh, tool and the beauty of this pivoted tool so that you don't have to remove it each time when you're going round see how free the, the adjusters are as well it's not seized up that's where a little grease brake grease comes in handy so you don't want to unscrew that all the way, of course, because they can come out when you don't want that. You can just see the threads starting to show themselves there at the back plate. That's enough now. In fact, it's probably more than enough. So now I can remove the, uh, the drum. just going to remove the drum here out comes the countersunk screw that's somewhere safely I know it, it sounds elementary but do use the right screwdriver for it something that's a good snug fit uh, that's free to turn so I know it's not going to offer any resistance at all when it comes off like so so that's that drum off and out of the way so the drums off the drum is now off down there one of the things to examine is any uh, grooves, any scoring in the drum, uh, any oil or brake fluid leaking, that's nice and dry, and there's no scoring, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, the linings there, there's, I'd say, how much is left on there at the lowest point, probably about an eighth of an inch perhaps I know for a fact that they're worse on the other side so they've all got to repla be replaced as an axle set now here's the adjuster there what I was turning is a sort of uh, wedge shaped uh, screw which pushes these two uh, things out and moves the drums uh, sorry moves the shoes either towards or away from the drum depending on which way you turn that adjuster at the back coming down to the wheel cylinder there um, I have been in here not so long ago because I remember putting this green brake grease on uh, so that was that 
it's a sliding a wheel cylinder which means it slides on the back plate for the handbrake operation and indeed the foot brake operation there is uh, one important component missing which is the rubber dust boot for the wheel cylinder uh, I'm not too bothered about that just at the moment because it'll all be coming apart again uh, when I do the uh, rear axle job with this oil leak uh, I don't want to remove the wheel cylinder now and have to bleed the brakes again only for the uh, rubber to get full of oil and uh, uh, quite possibly ruined by the oil so I'm just going to have another look at the workshop manual and then I can remove the shoes right folks uh, now's the time to remove the brake shoes themselves and following the guidance in the workshop manual it's the rearmost one that comes off first um, these particular drum brakes are a delight to work on uh, of all the various types i've dealt with these have got to be uh, the best the the most user friendly most pleasant to work on because they are simplicity themselves so i shall just remove these now and as you can see they're literally come apart like that you know that's all there is there that's literally all there is to that there are no steady uh, you know beehive springs etc that's it and there's no worry about mixing these up because they're identical the uh, springs so there you go uh, note that these are the bonded linings as I said they're not my favorite type because there is a risk that the bond can fail and the lining then becomes trapped in the drum locks it up causes damage to the drum and also a lot of aggro if you, when you're out on the road and it does happen guess how I know not on this car I haste to add but the top tip from me never discard these never throw them away they can be relined the shoes are all the same they've got the holes there for rivets so I shall return these and at some point have them uh, have them relined in fact let's just compare the thickness of these to no, there's not a great deal in it actually There is honestly not a great deal in there, difference-wise. But as I say, it's the other side that is more worn. So, you know, as a sort of postscript, I will uh, put a clip of that on. So, um... Reassembly really is just a reversal of removal as I think it was the Mr. Haynes like to say and then those immortal words you were still here two hours later trying to put it back together but yeah I can check whilst I'm here no leaks from the wheel cylinder it's sliding freely on the back plate there so that's fine I know there's the dust boot missing uh, there's a slight bit of corrosion on the wheel cylinder um, I'm not going to ask anybody to operate the foot brake to check the operation because uh, I don't suspect it I would have felt that in the car by the car pulling to one side so yeah that's fine um, give me hands a wipe because I don't want to be handling uh, brake linings with oily hands and uh, there is another job although it may not need doing 
uh, these pins here have to just touch you can see some witness marks on these uh, oh yeah even clearer there the pins have just got to touch the shoe there thinking the best way of reassembling these how it's gonna be now so it's gonna be opposite was it This is probably one of the hardest parts of uh, doing a drum break, making sure that the springs don't fall off. Right, okay, let's have a go at this. That in there, like so. That's on there. And let's see now, let's get that it's slotted in there. Right, <laughs> job done. Job done. So I'll just check that against the workshop manual uh, again, see if I've got it, got these the right way around. I know this one is definitely the, the right way around because it can only go the one way with this slot. Uh, they're all in there. So, yeah, I'm just going to double check, never does any harm, and I'll be uh, back in just a moment. Okay, the uh, replacement shoes are fitted, as you can see. Um, I've read the passage in the manual about the steady rests, I don't need to touch them. It's only necessary should there be evidence of uh, uneven were on the linings which there wasn't so it was barely discernible on on one of the shoes anyway and that's over a period of about 25 30 thousand miles so i'm not i'm not fussed about that um so i'm just gonna refit the drum uh adjust it up and call it a day now i've got to make sure the Turning uh, screw hole lines up with the hole in the uh, half shaft there. You may need to do a bit of adjustment of the uh, shoes just to get the drum on. Uh, watch your fingers, of course, otherwise get painfully trapped between the drum and the back plate. Just push it on. Refit the screw. And then it's just a case of manually adjusting them at the back. So the drum is locked and then just back them off until it's free again. I can do that now. And of course you're going to have to operate the foot brake and hand brake to uh, centralise the shoes. Right, that's just about starting to... contact now right yeah okay you see that that's locked so all I'm gonna do now and you don't need to see this is I'm just gonna operate the foot brake uh, I'll back this off uh, one or two clicks
so I'll operate the foot brake and that'll expand the shoes inside there and uh, they'll fit up properly then I'm gonna just readjust that and just do it so they're not dragging you can just hear I can just feel one of them at you know dragging there so that's it I'm gonna call it a day now for this uh, all that is left to do is the other side I'll refit the wheel to this and then I'll road test it but yeah nice easy uh, job that really I do need to expedite that uh, rear axle job though for the bearings and the oil seal because that this is why I wanted to do this job so this is in a right state and this is it you know I said the passenger side was the worst well look at that they are now wafer thin these linings um, so well due for removal a bit of uneven wear on these actually uh, certainly on this one although that can be uh, not not entirely unusual with the um, uh, is it the bloody leading shoe or trailing shoe one of them anyway because you you see the wheel cylinder is down here so the wheel cylinder is doing the work that's the one that's pressing the shoes expanding them towards the drum so necessarily there's more force uh, at this end whereas up there it's just the the adjuster so not entirely unexpected although that is quite um, quite a difference in wear oh well off with these and uh, yeah I, oh dear that's not coming away is it it bloody no it's not it's just a gap i thought it might be the bonding might be failing there but uh, right for renewal anyway it's also a right 